Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. The gospel reading today comes from John 20, verses 19 through 30. Hear these words. When it was evening in that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, then they are forgiven them. And if you retain the sins for any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, we have seen the Lord, but he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my fingers in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. But Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. Let us pray. Gracious God, be with us in these moments. Help us to hear the words that you have for us. Let me be your vessel. O Lord, my God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Have you ever locked your keys in your car? If so, you'll probably identify with the story that I'm about to share with you from my first year in seminary. It's the year that I finally call the year of the lockout. And the reason I call it that is because that was the year that I locked my keys in my car or locked myself out of my car at least 12 times. Now, prior to that year, I had honestly only locked my keys in my car once, the day of my college graduation, <laughs> And well, since that year, well, I've started to carry an extra key with me all the time. But that year, I was on a first-name basis with the Emory Campus Police, who would come and open my door each time I called. Today's Gospel reading, it makes me think of that year of being locked out. Except instead of being locked out, we find the disciples, minus Thomas, locked in. It's evening of the day, the day when Mary has come to them and told them that she has seen the Lord. 
we would think that they might be out rejoicing and joyful. But instead, there they are, locked behind the doors for fear of the Jewish leaders, the scripture tells us. Now, it's easy for us to hear this story and give them a hard time, but we weren't there. So we don't know exactly what they were feeling. I imagine that maybe they were afraid of meeting a similar fate as Jesus or even being accused of having stolen his body. Both of those are completely justifiable. But honestly, it's what happens next that always strikes me. When Jesus appears, offers them peace, shows them his scars, and then offers them peace again. He then tells them to go through the door out into the world to share the good news. And finally, he breathes on them and shares with them his Holy Spirit spirit that was to strengthen them and prepare them for this journey. So what do they do? Well, a week later, we find them again back inside the house for fear, we can suppose. They're not bold and empowered from the experience. Instead, they're right back where they started. They seem stuck. Now, this time, Thomas is with them. He's hoping for an experience similar to the ones that they had had the previous week. And that's when Jesus shows up and shows Thomas his scars. Jesus offers peace. And then he tells Thomas, and I think everyone else who is within earshot, to believe. To believe and to again go through the door to share the good news. Here we are, one week after Easter, one week since we have proclaimed, Alleluia, Christ has risen, one week since the day when it seemed so easy to give all of our burdens and our hurts and our pains to Jesus and to live in the joy and celebration of new life. But where are we today? Are we locked behind the same doors that we hid behind prior to Easter? Or are we empowered and ready to go, strengthened by the good news, out into the world to tell others that Jesus lives? If the resurrection is such a big deal, if it's so life-changing, then why would we ever find ourselves right back where we started? Easter needs to change us, not send us back to the place we were before. But that same place, that place we were before, is a comfortable place, and we like it there. It's familiar. Uncharted territory, new places, new people, saying things in a new way, that's not easy. That's hard. And so we, like the disciples, can easily give ourselves over to the temptation to just stay behind the locked door. Now, when we find the disciples there, we know that they need assurance. They need to process what has happened. They have questions. But the answer to those questions, it begins at that door. The door that Jesus doesn't unlock and walk through, but rather the door that Jesus keeps locked and walks through. The door that shows us Jesus' determination to reach people, to strengthen them, and to move them out into the world. There are two sides to every door. The first is the inside, where the lock is. That's the place that feels private and safe. It's the place where we can take faith seriously, but we don't necessarily have to share it with people we don't know. Typically, when we're behind a locked door, we know that place. We feel safe there. We know the people there. They know what to expect of us. We know what to expect of them. This is a place that is high on security and low on challenge. Jesus is determined to reach the people behind the locked doors. The place where people of faith often get stuck. 
we hear the story of resurrection. We know that it happened. We see it there in Scripture. We rejoice and we give thanks for all that has happened. But so often, the day ends and we stop. But resurrection, it's not a one-time event. It's a way of being and living. As the hymn said this morning, we are an Easter people. But that doesn't mean we won't have doubts and questions because we always will. Because it's not easy for us to live into the reality of Easter. For most of us, I imagine that when we woke up on Monday morning after Easter, we woke up to basically the same life we had on Good Friday. But that doesn't mean that the resurrection didn't work for us. It just means that we need time to grow into it. But growth means change, and something always has to die in order for growth to occur. When Jesus comes to the disciples, they're hiding they're scared, they're full of questions, they're not living in hope. And in the same way, Jesus seeks us, just as he did those disciples. And he comes and he answers our questions. Jesus steps through the walls of our fears and our doubts and our hardships and offers us peace. Jesus says we are not alone, but have already been found. Jesus comes to us again and again. On the inside of the door, we know that the tomb is empty. But it is only when we go through the door that we can live the rest of the story of resurrection, that we can live like the tomb is empty. And Jesus knows this. Because the other side of the door, well, that is the outside. And that's where the story of resurrection is set loose. When Jesus was inside the tomb and it was sealed, no one could see him. But when he came out to the other side, back into the world, alive, and began to reveal himself and proclaim that death was defeated, that's when the story was set in motion for all the world. When Jesus comes and offers peace, he goes on to say more to the disciples, to give them a mission. He says, just as my Father has sent me, so I am sending you. He sends us beyond the door. The peace Jesus offers us is not the peace as we think about it. It's not the kind of peace that the world defines. It's not rainbows and butterflies where everything is calm and the status quo is always maintained. A matter of fact, this kind of peace that Jesus offers sometimes upends the status quo. It challenges us. It's unexpected. It's a peace that calls us to the other side of the door, the side where the world lives, the side where things can get messy, the side that is public, the side where relationships and communities are built, the place where good and evil contend with each other, and the place where some things go forward and work to bring about the kingdom of God, and some do not. When Jesus offers his peace, he empowers us for the work of Easter. Work that's not always easy, but work that tells the story of resurrection. Jesus transforms us from just followers to proclaimers. Proclaimers who move out into the world to say Jesus is alive. Jesus prepares us and invites us to go with him into these new places. And when we step through that door, the new life that we have received in Christ It's revealed to the entire world, to all the people that we meet. The resurrection, it is our starting point. It's the place where we are called from to go into the world. Jesus shows us what this means. And he gives us all that we need, his Holy Spirit to help us on the way. 
The story begins when we say yes to the mission that is entailed in resurrection. It's the starting point from which we move forward. It marks our opening to new growth in faith, community, and life. And even though we may give in to that temptation, like I mentioned earlier, to sometimes give the disciples a hard time, we can see that they didn't continue to stay where they were, that they did move forward, that they did grow. Take Thomas. We often tag him with the nickname Doubting Thomas. But do you know the rest of his story? Do you know where he died? Thomas died in India. He died in India because that is where he went to share the good news of Jesus Christ with people. Thomas died a martyr. He was run through with spears. This does not sound like someone who continued to doubt. It does not sound like someone who lived an easy life, who was complacent in all that he did. What it does sound like is someone whose life was changed by the gospel of Jesus, who grew in his faith and in his courage, a person for whom the resurrection has made a huge difference. We always remember doubting Thomas, but maybe we need to pay more attention to confessing Thomas. Remember, he said, my Lord and my God. Thomas recognized Jesus and he stepped through the door to a new life, a life that moved from doubt to confessor, confession, a story of resurrection. The day that Jesus came to him in his doubt, that was just the starting point of the story, but it wasn't the whole story. And it's the same for us. What is our starting point? Last week, we celebrated the good news of Easter, but let's not let it stop there. Let's consider what needs to die within us so that we can truly live the story of resurrection. No matter where we are today, whether we're lonely, afraid, timid, or challenged, that's where Jesus comes to us, comes to us through the door. It's where Jesus meets us and it is where Jesus calls us to go from, to go out and to tell the story of the new life we've received. When I shared about my tendency to lock my keys in my car several years ago, I didn't tell the whole story, the way that I learned from those experiences. You see, each time that I called the campus police, I was very embarrassed by what I had done. I mean, after you do it so many times, you're just about ready to croak every time you have to call someone to come unlock your car. And so while I was waiting on them, I would sit there and I would think, what excuse can I tell them about why I locked my keys in my car? And each time they came, again and again. And they never asked me why. I never needed to use any of those excuses. They never laughed at me or judged me or gave me a hard time. Instead, they just asked me how my day was going. Then they, you know, told me to get some rest, and they opened the door for me. They gave me what I needed on those days so that I could move forward. And eventually, I did move forward from those days. The gospel story would be tragic if the disciples had remained behind the doors and not unlocked it. But that's not the story. They went to the other side. This is the story where Jesus shows up and meets us where we are behind the closed doors in our doubts and in our fears, and he gives us what we need. He shows us the depths of his love, and he strengthens us for the work that is before us. He wants us to go out, 
and move beyond our starting point. This gospel story is not about one about it's not one about disciples who don't go. It's about disciples who do go. It's about the people who get out of the house. And Jesus knows that that's not easy, but we don't have to worry about that because Jesus will show up again and again. He did it twice in today's scripture. Jesus is the one who comes to us. He endured the brunt of chaos and hate and is present now and is alive. Easter changes everything. It changes us. Jesus has given us the courage through Easter to strengthen us at every point in our lives, in every experience. So we don't have to judge where we are today because it is what it is. But today is just our starting point. It's the place where we can stop hearing the resurrection story and can actually start living the resurrection story. And nothing will keep Jesus from stepping into our midst, breathing peace and hope into our lives, and giving us the courage to walk through the door and out into the world. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for always coming to us no matter where we are. Thank you for strengthening us and giving us hope. Lord, help us to embrace the story of Easter, of resurrection, and grow into it so that we may live each day as Easter people. And we may live each day and share the good news with all the people we meet. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. My name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're a church that's a place of community and faith, and we're a welcoming church. I hope that you experience that online, but not only online. My hope is that you experience it through our Facebook page. But not only that, once we meet together in person, we're at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, and I hope you'll come and experience it in person. We're a welcoming church. We're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. It's a place of community and faith where we help people live a Christ-centered life. And my hope is that you'll come and be a part of it. Thank you for joining us.